welcome back to the Rock Coder Space Invaders tutorial. Before we move on with today's tutorial, which largely consists of adding scores, uh, lives to the display, I found a few issues that need neatening up. If we go to the Create Invaders code, and instead of starting at the top of the screen, make them start much lower down. Watch what happens as the invaders pass through the blocks. They're supposed to erase the blocks as they move through them, but because they're sprites they just travel over the top of them. So this is the first issue that we're going to quickly fix. In the display code, we're going to modify it because in the costumes for the invader we have a blank block and if we stamp that blank block underneath each invader as it's moving along, then it will automatically erase any part of the shield that it travels over. So, heading back to the invader, before we switch the costume, we're going to switch the costume to the blank block and simply stamp it. If you watch this, see how the invaders now cleanly cut through the shields. That's how it should be in the real game. Another very small issue is that when the invaders actually land, then they're leaving bombs and missiles on the screen. So to fix that, we'll broadcast this is in the Move Invaders block. Just set the game over to two, broadcast, remove missile, and broadcast, remove bombs. Now we can move on to adding the scoring. I'm going to make it so that the different invader types give you different amounts of points. So to do that, we will go into the invader sprite, we will add a new variable, a list rather, and it's going to be for all sprites and it's going to be called score. When we initialize the game, we're going to delete all of score and then type 1 invaders are going to give us 15 points, type 2, 10, and type 3, 5. So we'll just add these to the list. 15 points for type 1. Add 10 points for type 2. And add 5 points for type 3. Now we're going to also want to make sure that when we start the game our score is zero. On top of that we should actually make sure we have a score. Make a variable for all sprites called score and when we initialize lives we'll also initialize score to zero. Now we're going to score points by shooting invaders. So in the invader sprite check collisions. When we've hit an invader, all we need to do is change the score. So change score by item. It depends on the invader type. item invader type of scores and we will put that in hmm, we'll put that in there right at the top so if any invader is hit by a missile we score points if we now go to our stage and have a look at the backdrops 
currently using the blank backdrop, but we also have a second backdrop. Let's delete the blank backdrop. And this is the second backdrop. Simply has some parts of the hood of the head up display already there. So now when we play the game, I'll put the invaders back to the proper height. That's going to make it rather difficult. So back in the create invaders, we'll have them starting at a height of 128 again. Let's display the score variable. But instead of like that, let's change it to a large readout and position it over there. Also the lives variable, let's display that again. That's a large readout. We'll squeeze that in there. We don't have a high score set up yet, so we'll come back to that. But if we run the game now, you should see we start on zero. And we've actually got a working score now. I've got three lives. If I can get hit by a bomb, lives goes down to two. So now I just need to add the high score. So back in the manage game, let's make a variable called high score for all sprites. Now initially I'm going to assume that you're a new scratcher and don't have access to cloud variables Later on, I will add the cloud variable facility. So at the beginning of the game, at the moment, I'm going to I'm going to see this and wonder why it's repeating 10 times. That should just be repeating forever. I don't just want 10 games. So when I first start the game, I'll set the high score to zero and I will set the score to zero. Let's display the high score as a large readout, put it over there and let's go back into the Invader Sprite, where it's changing the score in the collision code. Check collisions. I'm simply going to add in there if the score is bigger than the high score, we're going to set the high score to match the score. So as you go past the high score, the high score will start increasing with your score. And that will go in just after we've updated the score value. So now we have all elements of the head-up display in place. Not looking particularly neat, but they're in place. See, the high score is going up because I'm beating it. Ideally, we'd like those numbers at the top to match the rest of the display. So we're going to have to add a routine for displaying numbers nicely. So let's have a look at the number sprite. So we've got a costume set up for every number and a blank for erasing the numbers. And we're going to display these using the pen. When we receive the initialize game message. We're going to set the Y coordinate where we're going to display the numbers. All numbers are displayed on the same line at the top of the screen there. So we will set Y to 162. And we will hide the main sprite. Now, I'm going to add another receiver for a function called update HUD, which I haven't added yet. Whenever I receive 
update HUD, which is a new message. This is where I want to display the numbers. I'm going to stamp them. I need to stamp numbers for the score, for the lives, for the high score. So I'm going to create a custom block that I can use to display all of these. Make a block, I'll call it display number, and I will run without screen refresh, it has to run quickly. I'm going to create a variable called number. For this sprite only, when I come into this custom block, I'm going to set number. So I'm going to edit that custom block, it needs to take parameters. So display number, and then it's going to be whatever the number is that I want to display. I need to know what position on the screen. So at x is a label, and it adds an input of x. And I want to know how many digits to display. For instance, for the lives, I'm only going to display one digit. If it's going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. For the score, I can display five digits and the same for the high score. So I have a label with digit count. You don't need labels, but they make it easier to see what your code's doing. Digit count. Now I'm going to set my number to number. I need to make sure if, I, if I'm displaying a score with five numbers, and the score's only 75, and I need three zeros before the 75. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a repeat loop in here. Repeat until not length of number is less than digit count. I'll explain this in a moment. Length of number less than digit count. So back with the example, if I've scored 100 and I want to do it in five numbers, then number, the length of number is only three. And so I want to loop in here until it has reached five. And each time to make the number slightly longer, I'm going to add a zero at the beginning of it. So I'll join, set the number to join zero and number. And this will keep looping until the number is at least digit count in length. Next, I'm going to set the X position to start printing the number on the screen. So, so X2 and for positional sake, it's going to be 18 times by the X coordinate. Each number is 18 pixels wide. So 18 times by X minus 2, 3, 4. I just know that by experimentation, that's the correct position. So I'll set the X position, and now I need an index to go through the numbers. So I'll make, for this part only, index. I'll set it to 1. And I'm going to display each digit. So I'm going to repeat digit count times. First of all, we're going to erase any numbers that have already been drawn in that area. We'll do that by changing the costume to blank and stamping it. That will effectively remove anything underneath it. Then I'm going to switch the costume to the number that I need to display. So quit switch the costume to I want the current letter, which is letter index of number. That is going to be either a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. My costumes start 
at one, not zero. So I'm going to have to add one to this. So that if it's a zero, it displays costume one. If it's a one, it displays costume two and so on and so forth. So if I switch costume there and then stamp this, move along for the next character so I'll change x by 18 and change index by 1. That should allow me to display any number. Now I just need to display the numbers that I want. So let's go to the my blocks, let's display a number. We want to display the score so let's do that. Display score, x is 6, and we'll have 5 digits for the score, and I'll remove that score from the screen. Copy this block, display another number, this time I'm going to display lives. At x equals 17, further across, just one digit for lives, because we don't need more than that. Then, for the last one, you can display High score, you can display it at 21, the digit count of 5. So let's remove these from the screen. Go back to the manage game and add another broadcast to the end there. Are we going to broadcast update HUD? Hopefully, when I run this, I'm now seeing score and match the rest of the display. It's much, much better. And that is basically a full game of Space Invaders. Although, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show how to add an attractor mode so that even when you're not playing, the game will play itself.